What's up guys, welcome back to The Decent Garage. Today's gonna be somewhat of a short video, but an important video. So last video, you guys saw that I installed the new Suncoast torque converter on the truck, uh, and I've put a few miles on it since, and it's been great so far. Now I'm in the process of filming a video doing some comparison of the stock converter to the new converter, as far as some of the numbers go and what how the truck runs. But as I've been driving, I've noticed two things that we need to adjust. So this torque converter is more efficient. One of the words I've seen used a lot on the forums is it's, it's tighter. Um, and so what that has done is idle has dropped. So we need to raise the idle. And then the other thing is pre-boost fueling we need to adjust. So you can see right here, uh, the idle's hovering right around 650 or so. That's in gear and that's not with the AC on. So with the AC on, it'd probably drop 25 more. So we need to get that closer to 750. So we'll adjust the idle. Now you can see here, this is from a dead stop takeoff. This is a ton of smoke. This is more smoke than this truck has ever put out. So I don't know how to explain why this is, but essentially the converter is more efficient. It's tighter. So that means at idle, it's actually taking more energy to idle higher because the converter's taking some of that energy. And from a dead stop, it's taking more energy to get the truck moving. So it's taking more energy to get through the converter to put that power down, which is not a bad thing. In the end, when we need that energy in towing and in speed and things like that under load, that's when the converter will shine. So we just need to make some slight adjustments to the truck get it running right, and then we'll be ready to go. So let's get that taken care of. All right, so in order to adjust the idle, we're gonna have to loosen the lock nut on the idle screw. I've done a video showing my idle screw setup, and it's a little bit different than stock. So you can check that out if you want to. But to loosen that lock nut, we're just gonna use a small hammer and a sharp flat blade screwdriver, and then we should be able to adjust the idle. All right, I got the idle screw just a little bit. Let's fire it up and see where we're at. We'll fire it up, throw it in gear, turn the AC on and see where we're idling. Okay, we're gonna turn the AC on. So we are about 720. We're gonna go up just a little more. All right, we went up just a little more. Let's try that. Okay, we're at 850 in park. And just over 750 in gear. So that's pretty dang good. All right, I am going to get the lock nut set on the idle screw. If you haven't seen why that is essential, oh, shit. make sure to watch the video that I put at the very end of this video. It's an exciting video. So I'm gonna set that lock nut and then let's adjust our pre-boost fuel. So we've talked a lot about AFC tuning, mainly on the P-pump truck, but it's very similar on the VE pump. So with our loads of smoke in pre-boost, that means we need to adjust the smoke screw. That is the pre-boost fuel screw. So on a VE pump, that is right here. So you can see I still have the factory tamper-proof cap on mine. I've never messed with it but we're gonna have to mess with it. So we'll pull that cap off, we'll undo the lock nut, and we will back the fuel screw out a couple turns, maybe one or two turns. Then we'll lock the lock nut and go test it out and see how it is. So that should give us less fuel pre-boost. So to get the tamper-proof cap off, just get a flat blade screwdriver, hammer this through there. We're gonna go out on the edge just a little more and then just pry up on it. Boop. There it goes somewhere. 
All right, so uh, I've got a 13 mil socket, break the lock nut loose. And then we have a T25 Torx. So there's one full turn. We'll go one and a half. All right, let's go test it out and see if it's better and we're not dumping smoke from every stop sign we stop at. So let's go. All right, we are pulling up to our stop sign. I can already tell the smoke's better just from the two stop signs I've stopped at, but let's do a little pull here. Oop. Well, maybe we need to adjust it more. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> All right, we're gonna pull over and adjust it even a little bit more. All right, so I backed it out a whole nother turn and a half. So we're at three turns out. We'll get to a stop. Okay, I'm gonna turn around. Let's try one more pull. Don't know that I want it any less than that, and I might just have to control that smoke with my foot a little bit better. Yeah, it's, it's a lot better. Still dumps a little bit quickly, but it does clear up really fast, which is something I like. Yeah, so it's it's a lot better. It's still, I mean, I hate dumping smoke bombs at stop signs, so uh, it's still a little smoky, but because of some of the changes I'm gonna be making coming up here, I'm gonna leave it at that. I just wanted to back it out a little bit so that when we do some of the towing with this new torque converter, it's not just dumping pure smoke. So I think we're good enough there, but the moral of the story is a new torque converter that's more efficient is going to require some tuning to the fueling of the pump because it just, I don't even know how to explain it. Like I said, I'm not a trained mechanic, but it takes a different amount of fueling at different times to put the power down with a more efficient converter. So. Maybe if you know exactly why that is, or you can explain it better, comment that below so we can understand it a little bit better. But next video, we're gonna be towing with this, towing Prospector Bob on the trailer, comparing some numbers, some RPMs, EGTs, trans temp, all of the above. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for the support, and we will see you guys in that video.